Hello, my and White Bear welcoming you to another episode of Amiga Retro Games. Now this time around we're going to do two games. Yeah, two games that were reasonably popular. In fact, one of them was very popular at its time. And one was very underrated. The first game we're going to cover though is Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker. Now this was a game by veteran programmer Archie McLean and was released by Virgin Games in 1991 for both the Amiga, the ST and the PC. A later version of it was released on the Sega Mega Drive. Although the game was not the first to simulate a snooker or pool table in 3D, it did make full use of the processing power and graphical capabilities of 16-bit home computers at the time, and was praised for its groundbreaking realism and easy-to-use interface. Many remarked that the game was the closest thing to being on a real snooker table that existed at that time, and it could be uh, used by a player to refine their real-life snooker skills. Following the game's release by Virgin, um, Virgin themselves launched a nation nationwide uh, tournament in the UK. Regional heats were held at various Virgin mega stores, um, retail outlets, and the eventual winner went on to challenge Archie McLean himself in the first series of Channel 4's Games Master TV show, and it had Jimmy White, the famous snooker player himself, doing all the commentary. That was a, I remember that show, actually. It was pretty good. Despite being an accurate and serious simulation of the sport, McLean's irreverent sense of humour was very prominent throughout the entire game. The sound effect used for a successful pop was a resounding pop sound, irregardless of the speed at which the ball reached the pocket. And numerous animations were included in the game to provide a bit of comic relief should a player take more than a few seconds to take their shot. For example, balls would sprout eyeballs and arms, making faces at the player or holding up signs, you know, placard signs that said, get on with it, <laughs> such and so forth. Also present within the game was an extensive trick shot editor, featuring a number of preset table arrangements with instructions on how they could be played. The game was followed up in 1992 um, by its baby brother called Archie McLean's Pool. Effectively the same type of um, setup, except this time you were playing 8-ball, 9-ball uh, pool on a slightly smaller table. And in 1999, Jimmy White's 2 Q-Ball was released. Now, a bit of trivia on the game itself. The game's title music was similar and probably intended to pay homage to uh, TV program from the UK named entitled Pop Black. The game took Archie McLean several years to complete. The physics between the balls alone taking several months of programming. A cheat mode is in, it, in there which enables the option to watch the computer player complete a maximum break of 147. And one of the reasons why the game runs so quickly is due to the way each shot is played. The next shot is played while the white ball is being queued. One of the reasons why that was done I, is told that basically the game does not drag on forever and ever. The position and movement of each ball was is all because of that was being calculated frame by frame and kept in a list. Each frame of the next shot is then played by rendering each ball from this list, frame by frame. So it was very, very ahead of its time on programming. Anyway, Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker developed by Virgin Games, published by Virgin Games, and was designed by Archer McLean, released in 1991. And that's all we can say about that one, really. Anyway, we've got a couple of adverts coming up for you now, and then we'll move on to the second half of today's show, which will uh, cover another um, pretty underrated game for the Amiga and the ST, which was called Battle Chest. Battle Chest? Battle Chest. Battle Chess. Sorry. So... Check out these adverts, feel free to check out these um, other guys' videos and uh, channels and stuff on websites, and we'll see you after the break.
Hello, we players and all those who happen to watch. Here's another edition of Is It Worth Your Wee Points? Now, we are going to go into our second game for this episode, and that is a game by Interplay called Battle Chess. It was released in 1998 on the 3DO, the Amiga, the Amiga CD32, the Apple II of all things, and, and the Apple II GS, the ST, the C64, uh, PC, Macintosh, NES, and uh, it, there was a later version that was released purely for Windows 3.1. Uh, Basically, it's chess with a twist. Uh, all the pieces come to life and take part in animated battle, which ensue when one piece takes another. So instead of just moving your pieces around and stuff like that, things actually do badly duke it out, badly it out, with certain bits of comedy value to it. Um, there is a different animation for each of the per um, permutations, so depending on who you kill, depending on what um, type of piece your piece is taking, depends on what type of battle ensues. You can play also as a traditional 2D uh, version without any of the animation. But the game's opening library includes 30,000 different moves, ensuring a good variety of games will unfold across the 10 skill level set. Multiple player support can be extended to mo uh, modem or by serial port play. So it was one of the first few games back in 98 that would actually allow effectively online multiplayer to an extent, or peak, you know, network play, etc. Now, more about it is basically the 35 animations that are in there, like I just mentioned, uh, include including the movement animations alone. There's a prelude to a battle and all the combinations of the battles themselves when you take a piece. Um, the latter often <laughs> the latter often rather being brutal. The rook, for example, turns into um, a rock monster and kills a pawn by literally crushing him. Which has, I've got to admit, some of the anim funny battles in here are funny. I mean, there's one which is on the footage here where you see, you see a knight being done, and it's a classic Monty Python um, style knights of knee where he cuts off his arms and legs and stuff like that. It's pretty funny, it's worth checking out. Um, 
Battle Chess reached out to a new audience with the classic chess game, because chess games at the time in 88, when computer games were at the height of popularity for being new and innovative, um, chess wasn't really considered amongst that until Battle Chess came out. Like I said, the game can also be played in the traditional 2D version with no animations, and the Amiga, CD t- c- the Amiga CDTV version features fully voiced introduction describing the movements of all the pieces uh, for the benefit of beginners. The reception the game got helped launch Interplay as an independent computer game design house after it ended its relationship with EA. In turn, Battle Chess spawned a horde of imitators, but none quite matched the humorous um, animations of artists Todd Kamte- Kamsler and Bruce Schlick- uh, Schlickbend and were never as successful as the original Battle Chess. They, want, uh, they also want to put Software Publishers Association Award for best graphics for their effort. The game pro- was programmed by Michael Quills, lead programmer, and Jayesh Patel. A 1991 sequel was later released, entitled Battle Chess 2, Chinese Chess. The game uh, was based on the game Yangi. I can't pronounce that. Yangi. I don't know if I have pronounced that right. So if I have mispronounced Chinese chess in its traditional name, sue me because I can speak Chinese. <laughs> anyway, it's also not in English as Chinese chess. A 1992 sequel called Battle Chess 4000 um, was also released on PC um, and the Amiga, and that featured clay animation for the pieces rather than rendered. They actually did clay animation with that. The limitations of the game is very simply this. At least one of the weaknesses that the board cannot do is be rotated. So if the player wishes to take the side of the black or the blue places in this particular version of the game, uh, this means playing down the board against the white or red pieces in this game. So you can't rotate the board. If you are playing the blue character, you have to play down the board as you look at it, and vice versa with the red character. Also, the capturing piece is always in the top right corner, while the captured piece is in the bottom left, with only the colours reversed depending upon which side has to be moved. There is also no alternate view of a particular battle combination, so if you've got a couple of chess pieces that are covering up a battle thing, you can't see all the animations unfortunately. That is one of the weaknesses to the game, but then again, for a game that came out in 1988, it was a hell of a hell way ahead of its time. Anyway, I hope that's been a little bit of um, info into Battle Chess. I say, developed by Interplay, released by Interplay, and was designed by Tom Camster, Michael Quills, J. S. P- J. Patel, and Bruce Schlickbend. Re- released in um, 1988 originally, and with subsequent um, sequels li- being released up until 1994. Anyway, that's all. We've really come to the end of our uh, show for this particular episode. Might be my way. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode of Amiga Retro. Till then, be safe and take care.